just because you're a royal doesn't mean childbirth can't go wrong, a fact that Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, learned the hard way. Lady Louise's father, Prince Edward, is the youngest of the late Queen's children, which makes Louise the granddaughter of the late Queen and the niece of King Charles III. Although the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh can now celebrate the successful lives of their children, starting a family was not easy for them. Since the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh were first married, they have always resided in Bagshot Park, Surrey, a royal family residence located 11 miles and a 20-minute drive from Windsor. Although many of the royal mothers traditionally delivered at a royal residence or St. Mary's Hospital in London, Sophie wanted to deliver the baby close to Bagshot Park. In the end, she chose to deliver the baby at Frimley Park NHS Hospital in Surrey, just four miles away from her home. Over the years, Edward and Sophie have been known to lead a relatively normal lifestyle for royals, and their choice of hospital was an early example of how the Duke and Duchess would live. Sophie's choice to deliver close to home might also be explained by the experience she had with her first pregnancy in 2001. Sophie suffered an ectopic pregnancy, which resulted in a miscarriage. She had to be airlifted to King Edward VII Hospital, where she underwent over two hours of surgery to save her life. For Lady Louise's birth, Sophie entrusted her local hospital staff to handle the task, and no one could have known that the decision might have saved her life. Because she had survived that tragic miscarriage due to ectopic pregnancy in 2001, Sophie was incredibly cautious leading up to the birth of Louise. She canceled all events early in her pregnancy until she was cleared to travel in June 2003. In November 2003, about four weeks before the baby was due, Sophie was supposed to be traveling to attend a Remembrance Day event with the royal family when she began to feel unwell. She began experiencing abdominal pain at her home in Bagshot Park around 6 p.m. Although the Duchess wasn't expecting the arrival of the baby so early, she knew something wasn't right when the excruciating pain persisted for two hours, and at 8 p.m., she phoned for medical assistance. Unfortunately, when she phoned for medical care, the information was somehow confused and the police were sent to Bagshot Park instead of a medical team. At the time of the call, no one understood just how dire the situation was becoming for the Duchess. But as events unfolded, it would soon become apparent that this mix-up caused a 30-minute delay in care that could have cost Sophie's life and the life of her child. When Sophie arrived at the hospital, doctors discovered that she was suffering from a placental abruption, a condition in which the placenta detaches from the uterus. About one in 100 pregnancies results in placental abruption, and the condition can range from mild to severe. Traumatic blood loss for the mother and loss of oxygen and blood supply to the baby can cause injury or death to the mother and child if they are not treated immediately to ensure safe delivery. Any amount of bleeding that's of any significance needs to be evaluated quickly. Medical staff performed an emergency cesarean section surgery to deliver the baby safely while Sophie slipped in and out of consciousness. It was later revealed that she had lost a life-threatening amount of blood, and her condition was so dire that she was said to be within 15 minutes of death. Despite a nearly tragic outcome, the royal family welcomed a baby girl, weighing four pounds, nine ounces, on November 8, 2003. On the evening of the delivery, staff attempted to reach Prince Edward to inform him of his wife's condition. Historically, royal fathers did not attend births, but Queen Elizabeth II established a new royal trend in 1964 for the birth of, ironically, Prince Edward. By the time Lady Louise arrived in 2003, it was more common for royal fathers to be present during childbirth, and Edward's presence had been expected. Unfortunately, Edward was traveling for official royal duty on the eastern coast of Africa, in Mauritius, which was a 12-hour journey away. Due to Louise's unexpectedly early arrival, the prince was not able to make it home in time for the arrival of his first child. It also meant that Sophie endured all of the trauma surrounding Louise's birth on her own, and she remained alone for a full 24 hours before her husband could join her. On Sunday, Edward landed at Farnborough Airport, telling the press, I am rather shocked at the moment, but delighted, just thrilled to bits. Edward also admitted to reporters that Sophie was understandably fraught over the delivery. He would spend the next month balancing official duties with hospital visits to his new family. In addition to the difficulty of Prince Edward's absence, Sophie's family couldn't be reached in time for her parents to attend the birth either. Instead, Sophie had the company of the Queen's gynecologist, Marcus Setchell, the press secretary, Elsa Anderson, and her courtiers, the palace advisors who Princess Diana had once described as the men in gray suits. They're gatekeeper, they control who they get to see. The birth was also attended by a surgeon, gynecologist, and midwife. 
Following the birth, it was reported that Sophie had very few visitors, including friends, indicating that she endured a difficult recovery. However, there was one very special guest when, in a rare move, the queen herself reportedly visited Sophie in the hospital. Following the stabilization of mother and baby, Lady Louise was flown to the neonatal unit of St. George's Hospital in London. This happened just minutes after the baby had been delivered, and Sophie was only able to see her daughter briefly before she was transferred. At the time, it was reported that the move to London was precautionary. Premature newborns are often kept in the hospital to treat underdeveloped lungs, brain, heart, and other major organ and immune system functions. Nevertheless, the baby's exact condition was closely guarded during the stay at St. George's Hospital. Following a visit to their daughter at Frimley Park, Sophie's parents had very little to share, but her father, Christopher Reese Jones, assured the BBC, Sophie is absolutely fine. She's heavily sedated and rather sleepy, but she is perfectly okay. The baby is also fine. After updating the press, the grandparents immediately traveled to London to be with their new granddaughter. Good evening. The ITV weekend news headlines tonight. Prince Edward and his wife Sophie are celebrating the birth of their first daughter. Soon after the palace's official birth announcement, it was reported that Sophie would stay at Frimley Park for only five days. But it quickly became clear that the birth had been quite an ordeal, and the days ticked by while both mother and daughter remained hospitalized. As it turned out, Sophie lost nine pints of blood the day she delivered Lady Louise, and it took significant time to recover. Edward, often seen wearing a concerned look, traveled back and forth between the hospital where his daughter was being treated and the hospital where his wife was recovering. Less than a week after her birthday, Lady Louise was released from St. George's on November 14th and sent to Frimley Park, where mother and daughter could finally be together. Sophie remained hospitalized until November 19th, and the prince and Sophie finally took their new baby girl home to Bagshot Park on November 23rd. Baby Louise had a tough start in life, having to remain hospitalized and monitored closely for the first two weeks following her birth. Louise was also diagnosed with an eye condition known as esotropia only months later. Esotropia is a condition in which underdeveloped eye muscles and nerves can cause the eyes to turn in, and the condition can cause vision difficulties and blindness. The condition, also known as a squint, can occur in premature babies and may require surgical intervention to correct the affected eye and vision development. Understandably, Sophie did not want to send Louise to be hospitalized again after spending the first two weeks of her life apart following her birth, but knew the surgery was necessary for Louise's development. Unfortunately, the first surgery to correct Louise's condition was unsuccessful, and it would take several years and an additional surgery before Louise would have corrected vision. In 2021, Sophie said, her squint was quite profound when she was tiny, and it takes time to correct it. You've got to make sure one eye doesn't become more dominant than the other, but she's fine now. Her eyesight is perfect. During Lady Louise's hospitalization following her birth, she was simply reported as a baby girl. Later, the family announced her official name, Lady Louise Alice Elizabeth Mary Mountbatten Windsor. Louise was seen as the perfect name for the child, as it is said to mean famous warrior, which is an excellent representation of her entrance into the world. Although her full surname is Mountbatten Windsor, Louise has only used Lady Louise Windsor throughout her life. Before Louise was born, Sophie and Prince Edward had already decided that none of their children would have the title of Royal Highness. The couple chose the name Louise after royal relatives such as Louise of Hesse Castle and Queen Victoria's daughter, Princess Louise. As royal names often do, the rest of Lady Louise's name also carries special meaning. Alice comes from Princess Alice of Battenberg, Prince Edward's paternal grandmother. Elizabeth has obvious ties to the late Queen Elizabeth, as well as the Queen Mother, while Mary is Sophie's mother's name. Despite the terrifying ordeal that Sophie endured during Lady Louise's birth, she had a great deal of faith in the hospital and the staff who attended the delivery. When it was time to choose the birthplace of her second child, James, in 2007, Sophie didn't hesitate to choose Frimley Park again. In 2014, the Duchess attended an emotional dedication of the neonatal unit at the hospital where her children were successfully delivered. Through tears, Sophie was able to embrace Adrian Price, the head of midwifery, who attended both births. During the dedication, she acknowledged the hard work of the hospital staff and how much it meant to her and her family, saying, I want to say well done to everyone for your fundraising and for all the work you do to help thousands of families. Your service is the difference between life and death. 